are crazy. Yeah. Um, welcome to Airsoft Radio. It is your weekly Airsoft show discussing all things Airsoft, whether it's news, reviews, opinions, and some general discussions or controversial ones, as we've had in the past. Uh, I'm your host, Graham from Airsoft Nation, and with me, as always, are my co-hosts. We have Platoon Jim here. Hello. And the cool sign Tata Quinn here. Hello. And our special guest for the evening is Mr. Land Warrior Airsoft, as Jim was saying earlier on today. <laughs> <Scott> <laughs> Alan Land Warrior. My gender. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> if you're offended, yes, if you're offended. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to be exactly how this show is going to be tonight. I can tell you already for the next hour, it's going to be plenty of fun. But before that, let's jump into the intro and uh, we'll uh, start with what's happening this week. <laughs> Welcome to As of Radio. Good to have you here. If it is the first time you're here, welcome to the show. We are live every Monday at 8 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook, and I've scrapped off Twitch from now on. So don't forget you can join in with the conversation below in the comments. So feel free to ask a question, throw us your opinion, or just troll us. Because you know it gets a bit crazy down there at times. We'll do that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just Jim replying back to people. <laughs> I so, know you're offended. <laughs> get the snowflakes ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get my head gun out. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, it. Well, welcome to the show. Welcome, Scott. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you for having me. It's going to be a good hour for sure. Before we go into the topics, I know everyone's had a busy weekend. So one, I throw it over to you, Jim, as to what you got up to over the weekend. And obviously I, Scott as well. Yeah, I spent most of the weekend getting shot by Scott. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, um, it was uh, it was Sterling Essoff's, um Black Hawk Down theme game up at Catterick. Um, which is probably about somewhere in the middle between where Scott lives and, and where I am down in Kent. Yeah. So it's, uh, <laughs> it was a, a nice opportunity to, to see a lot of people don't normally get a chance to um, to talk to in person. So it was a it was a, a great bit of social on the weekend, as well as um, getting absolutely piss wet. And just, <laughs> Welcome to British here, sir. So. Oh god, it was <laughs> miserable but brilliant at the same time. Yeah. And, um, I just felt sorry for anyone who didn't turn up with a decent waterproof. <laughs> but left, for about 30 left my seconds. Head in the bedroom. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you were wet. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh it was a great game. So uh thoroughly enjoyable, even though we lost. Um Scott's uh militia forces definitely kicked our ass all weekend long, so it was uh, it was good fun. We had God on our side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to bring God That's into the first time I've ever heard that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, th I thought Matt stayed impartial. <laughs> <laughs> no context is needed for a statement like that. You just say it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, so, yeah, I, I don't know what it's like from, from Scott's side of things. Um, I assumed you're all standing around having barbecues laughing at us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a funny thing at Catrick because obviously I've played a lot and done the, the England versus Scotland games, captain and the Scotland team, things like that. And Catrick always feels like you're losing regardless of the score. And in my experience over the years, because <clears throat> the, the harder the games, um, you know, with big teams really pushing hard, you do just feel like total loggerheads constantly because you're literally just getting shot, going to respawn, shot, respawn. And it's it feels like an endless slog. And um, I think that's part of the beauty of that kind of game, though, is you see the result at the end. So you don't see the result through the game. Um, it's not till the, the finale that you went, oh, actually, we did really well. So it's, uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, way that the game kind of comes around. 
Yeah, it's um, uh, it was. I thought it was quite quite good that there were so many different things going on, and you might not have got to see like half of them. I mean, like the, mm -hmm. the big explosion for one of the Blackhawks on the Saturday. I I didn't get to see it. I was stuck in building like building twenty one or something stupid. Oh yeah, yeah. just being so away from windows. Um, <laughs> So uh, I think there'll probably be some photos, and there's definitely um, uh, Steve Reynolds, who's the guy who does a lot of the, the video stuff for Sterling, yeah. um, and as part of the, the team there. Um, his video will probably be able to show way better than I can ever describe it, but what they had for simulated Blackhawks were these, um, uh, they were like replica cars that had been made up yep. that you, you could burn. They were, they were a sort of um, a product that Beaver Fit had, had created, um, oh, and, and so they were on fire. Um, especially in, in the evenings, that made it really, really fun. Um, but then Saturday night, I think it was, what, about 9 o'clock? Yeah. Um, they blew the shit out of it. And it was, yeah. it didn't matter where you were on site, you could hear it and you could sort you could of smell it. <laughs> 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 that, uh, Napsaline charge, I think it is. It's uh, yeah. that big stage pyrotechnic stuff to use. It's, yeah, it was pretty awesome fireball. Yeah, so I got to see the one on Sunday when they when they blew the uh, the second crashed black hawk but that was um yeah still think i've got a bit of ringing in my ears <laughs> <laughs> worth it it's worth it 100 percent worth it yeah so what did you get up to sarah um i went to see my mum and dad up in essex so i was with them saturday and sunday getting from so, free weekend yeah <laughs> well, I'm, I'm kind of getting a sneaky father's day in yesterday so I can go to Fort Boston on Sunday. <laughs> ah. <laughs> he doesn't know that. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. Um, but yeah, no, I uh, I'm so looking forward to Fort Boston because I've not played at a site like that before. Because um, I know it was open a few years back, wasn't it? Yeah, open yeah. Open yeah. site, and now it's just reopened. So I'm getting properly excited for that because I know it's quite CQB as well with the tunnels and. Yeah, Graham, I, not... think, I think you've played there, haven't you? Yeah, I think I've been there three times already this year. <laughs> two, or, two or three times already, yeah. Yeah, so it's good then. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm someone that quite happily plays Woodlands, but not a huge CQB player, but I've had really good fun there. It's a nice site. It's small. Um, it's just a really easy place. There's a lot of kind of going around in circles around the site where you can really catch people off with. Um, oh, yeah, it's, it's an interesting small little site. Um, obviously, some bigger than something like AAA, but not a huge site. I mean, so there is some really good conflicts, but it's big enough for snipers as well. So it does provide that little bit of extra gameplay uh, for for the snipers for sure. Yeah, is it a Napoleonic fort or something? Is it or yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's, it's one of like a series of um, Napoleonic forts that are all around like the Medway Towns area. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah, Fort Amherst, which used to be an airsoft site, and now Fort. Mm -hmm. What was Fort Ball? Well, it's Fort Ballstall, um, which is run by the Reaper Ops guys, which is uh, a good oh, company okay. doing some uh, some nice things there, Alex and Dan. So, yeah, it should be a. Unfortunately, I won't be there this weekend. Um, I'll be down at Ace Combat, but some of the other um, boys will be there and hopefully cool. have a wicked time. So, yeah, so, looking forward to it. Don't have anything yeah. like that up here, unfortunately. But you've got your own site, haven't you? You yeah, just, yeah, we've got, just uh, go and play whenever you want. Yeah, we've got a Napoleonic <laughs> fort. I mean, uh, running about the woods is all right, but a fort's pretty cool, isn't it? So definitely, yeah. you have tanks in your game. Don't you What's have some story? tanks? You didn't you have tanks in some of your games? Yeah, we've got uh, two four three twos. <laughs> Um, well, just but, two but, on the first um, now, you buy one, and if one breaks down, you need the other one to pull the first one. So that was the logic. <laughs> It actually worked out really well one time. <laughs> um, yeah, no, they're, they're four features. Yeah, every site should have one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, every site can afford one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what sites make. <laughs> they can afford one. <laughs> uh, oh, I've, actually, I've got a photo of, uh, over here. Let's bring that up. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's bring the right banner out. There we go. So look at that. Oh, wow. It was a medic one, as you can see. It's, uh, we tried to paint over it, but it came off again. Yeah, but, uh, yeah they're, they're good fun. We use them. Uh, actually, those same charges that the Sterling guys were using, uh, we'll drive the tank over it. We'll drive, um, do like landmine games and stuff like that, just using film cans as landmines that you've got to clear when you go. Uh, so, yeah, keep, keep it fairly basic. It's a, a pretty simple uh, skirmish site that we run. Uh, a lot of new players and things like that, so... 
it's not hardcore Milsim or anything like that. So we've got every guy, every type of player from, you know, a bit of a Milsim guy to you know, jeans and a hoodie and a pair of trainers. It's really up to them. Is it a bit of a is it a bit of a bundle to try who, to see who's going to go go on the tank or do they take turns? Um, they all used to fight to get into the tank to shoot out the top hatch and then they like, <laughs> only get shot in the face. You know, the, the, the appeal wears off pretty quick. Um, it's generally a mobile objective rather than something to get in or out of. Um, people running in and in or out of a big steel box uh, can be a little bit hazardous. Yeah. Uh, but it's yeah, it's pretty awesome to see. And Definitely. just for, for anyone that's uh, watching or listening, uh, uh, they're downloading this podcast later. And um, whereabouts is the site? Uh, well, we're just south of Edinburgh, so we're a little town called Gorebridge. So it's about 10, 12 miles south of Edinburgh, which will mean cool. nothing to you guys probably. But <laughs> <laughs> um, so a half hour from Edinburgh, 45, 50 minutes-ish from Glasgow maybe. Which probably still means nothing to you guys, but <laughs> well, I was that's about seven hours from London, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> or 50 minutes in a plane. In, oh, in, in a previous life, I used to do gaming events and tournaments and stuff, and I actually got a mega bus to Glasgow just for a weekend event, and it took about 20 hours to get there. Yeah. On <laughs> but it did cost less than a tenner, so you couldn't go wrong, really. <laughs> but you lost <laughs> like £500 worth of your life. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was say, it only takes like 23 hours to fly to Australia, and you spend yeah. more time dropping around England. And you got to Glasgow, <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> <perfect>. <laughs> Instead of sunshine, you got stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> and, now, and now all the West Coasters hate me. No, I'd uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, is that what the knife rule is on site? No, it's uh, you know, knives are allowed bottles. No, it's uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was like Buckfast changed their bottles to plastic, wasn't it? Because they kept hitting each other with them. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it's funny because uh, Glasgow's got a massive airsoft following, and um, Edinburgh's obviously on the east coast. We've got probably not quite as big as Glasgow as a player base, but it's it's chalk and cheese. It's almost like the uh, Manchester Liverpool thing, you know, not too far apart, but a world apart. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, yeah. The, the good guys at Glaswegians are uh, are all tough players. I'll give them that. <laughs> You know, I, there was a lot there over the weekend, and uh, yeah. they were uh, yeah some some hard as nails guys. So, and uh, and speaking of great guys as well, there's a comment just flashed up on screen from that there, yep. from Baz, um, who uh, you know call him Mister Airsoft Winkle, maybe. Airsoft Winkle, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I got to uh, spend a fair bit of the weekend with Baz, and he's he's a great guy. And those guys. Travel over here a couple of times a year from from Holland to come and play. I was going to say, was the Dutch guys? Yeah, I spoke to a couple yeah. of them in the region and stuff when I was in their dead. So uh, yeah, they were nice guys. They've yeah. been there for a long time. A lot of them, though. Yeah, and they, I mean, they've been mostly sort of coming. They get off at, at Dover and end up coming to us and then going there um, oh, okay. to to a Sterling event. Um, and so it's always nice to see them at least sort of like once a year. But um yeah those it'd be great to have those guys on on here as well at some point and to let us know how the other half live over there in holland so it's uh, <laughs> i quite know. like the, the way they did their licensing in holland the, the car oh. <laughs> <I'm just laughs> in around their licensing right now um, oh, really? it's definitely um, a conversation. yeah i mean um i'm not being so, keeping up to date with it, to be honest i'm maybe a little bit behind on that so, so the way it works over there is everyone's got to pay 75 euros to have a license they have yeah. a full-blown organization um and right now going to court is a player who's coming up against the ministry of justice essentially the guys who these guys yeah. are um are basically in communication with like us going to uh home office and basically yeah. said i should be excluded from playing airsoft just because i'm not a member if he wins that then that sets precedent for everything else um so it will be interesting they've definitely got um they're, i'm sure they're pretty confident the nabv but it will definitely bring conversation as to what happens in future mm. yeah um, so, so i would definitely get them on we've had a, a few chats in the past about it because it's definitely an interesting concept because the nabv wanted to ban heavyweight bbs and i think there's been a lot of people getting more and more um on the hate train for that front and now someone's starting to yeah, it's always a problem when people poke the bear, really, isn't it? It's, yes. Um, um, uh, 
Air, airsoft's such a funny one because it's such a niche. Um, obviously, people upgrade guns, make them hot, all the rest of it. Um, but then when you look at motorcycles and things, people modify them way past what they're meant to do as well, yeah. at speed and stuff. Yeah, motorcyclists don't seem to go and clipe on each other to the police. Yeah, airsoft are <laughs> really quick to try and sink everybody else, even though so, it's the same boat they're standing in. <laughs> you need the hell's angel of airsoft teams to set exactly. the president. Someone screws up and goes to the Ukara police. Yeah, that's yeah. It. I brought Ben Webb from Sterling to be in charge of it. Yeah, ben Webb, <laughs> sorry, ben Webb, sorry. I was going to say Ben Webb from Sterling. <laughs> no, no, Ben Webb. Yeah, I think he wants to solve the world's problems by releasing loads of wolves. So, I'm down for that. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just, just solves all the world's problems. So, okay. Vote Ben. Vote Ben. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's, yeah. Uh, the weekend was good for you guys then. Uh, and the weekend overall, Patrick. Mm -hmm. Excellent, yeah, excellent. But Graham, what what were you up to this weekend? I went to Longmore for the first ever time, which is crazy since it's not that far away. So another training camp for this is just for a one day battle sim with Legion Airsoft events. Um, really cool MOD site. Uh, Jim, you must have been there already, right? Yeah, I played there yep. years ago. Yeah. Scott, have you ever been there? I know it's a bit. No. Done Not enough. one more. I've done Cope Pills, the, the only site, the training village I've ever done down that way. Yeah, yeah, it's quite, it's, it's very cool site. It's, to me, it felt very similar to Ripe. But um, yeah, it was a really cool, fun, wet day, really. Uh, but I was just saying to the guys before, is every time it rained, every player just jumped indoors and we were just fighting out of windows and through doorways. And then the rain would go and we'd all jump outside. Um, did you so, get to use New Seal, though? <laughs> what's that? Lucille, did you get to use her? Oh, I didn't. <laughs> so yeah, I was in the middle of a building and we'd been literally playing pot shot with a couple of guys in windows. You'd see their scope and that's it. We'd pop out and start firing at them. Um, and it was just, you know, through mags and mags and mags for like <laughs> half an hour of rain. And I looked in the corner, it was just a piece of board with what barbed wire wrapped around it it's like come on let's just go at it properly <laughs> <laughs> things escalate quickly yeah, yeah. <laughs> like in the deep, it's like, come on i'm fed up with this shit yeah. uh, i did get to use the new king arms sbr for the first mm. time though which was quite mm. nice after uh popping down to platoon to buy some magazines on the day before the event uh it was a, it's a nice little gun I like nice. the King Arms stuff, actually. It's really nice. Um, what I've always found weird for us from a retail point of view, no one buys it. Oh, it's yeah. a weird one. I think, obviously, they had that downfall a few years ago, didn't they? Where they yeah, so, they switched from Hong Kong to Taiwan, yeah, didn't they? Yeah, they yeah. switched countries, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And it seems to be they never really picked up from that yet. And I'm hoping to see more of it. Uh, we're definitely seeing more of King's Arms over here. But, mm -hmm. yeah, it does seem to be funny. I know the Peacemakers have sold really well. Mm -hmm. uh, chatting to a retailer last weekend. Um, but yeah, it does definitely seem like they're slowly growing, but it doesn't seem to be selling as quickly. I'll be honest, the rifle's fun. It yeah. doesn't beat a modify, but you're not paying a modify price. And that was the one bit of feedback I had at the weekend, having used the modify for four or five games this month, uh, this year. I switched to that and was like, oh, this is uh, a little bit more limiting. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing, nothing more than switching to something that's just not quite as good as what you're used to. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's half the price. But the funny thing is I, I, set, I met another Airsoft Nation uh, user out there and he had his modifier on there. He's like, how are you finding it? I was like, yeah, it's not quite what you're running. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a, a fun fun rifle. I mean, it works well for what it is for the price range. I mean, you're hitting kind of 40 meters fine, but it's not a 50, 60 meter modifier. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fun little rifle. And I got to run the Viper VX utility rig, which yeah, is the... Price. Stuff is really nice. It's really a nice. Play carrier. Yeah, the, um, just the, the overall quality just looks amazing. Yeah, they've definitely yeah. upped their game in terms of, of what they're producing. I'm running one of them at the weekend. It's, it's cracking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, it's it's, it's a cracking kit. It really is. Yeah, I'm really impressed with this year's lineup. I mean, I've used Viper for years, but this year's stuff is really strong. Um, very close to others, but at the end of the day, it's an airsoft friendly budget. And, uh, well, it's, it's <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was really tough with that for running that. And I'm looking forward to using the plate carrier next game day for sure. I didn't get to run that this weekend. Uh, but no, fun weekend. So, what was the rifle you were running at the weekend, Scott? You had what looked like a, a, an XLR? Yeah, it was a G3. Um, it was G3, right. Well, I think I it was, a, what was coming out of it. So yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> technically, I think a, a set me 
which was kind of like, I think, like Spanish built ones or something bizarre like that. The uh, we, we never actually worked out what the, the hell was originally. Um, I think it was at one point a Tokyo Marui G3 that someone put a metal body on, which I oh. think is a hurricane one, maybe. Um, and then a real wood kit on it, but then I got it like eighth hand and then <laughs> ripped everything out and rebuilt it from the inside out. So it's, it's, I don't think there's anything original in it at all now. So it's a, it's still got wood furniture. Yeah, it's a real wood kit. It's on it and it's, it's quite beat up and stuff. So it does actually look pretty Gucci. It was, uh, it was just bloody heavy and long to be carrying around <laughs> <laughs> trying to run into a building with a broomstick. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't use these guns anymore. Yeah, but no, it's, it was nice. It went for something a little bit authentic for uh, doing African militia. It was very authentic. Oh, you, you, were, um, you were limited on, on the number of mags that you had, weren't you? It was, uh... Yeah, well, I uh, just used the Maru standard mags, which I think are like 50, 60 rounds, something like that. And because they're obviously 762, they're like carrying videotapes. <laughs> um, if anyone's old enough to remember them anymore. Um, yeah, so I only had like four mags with me, but yeah, it was pretty good. It was good fun. It's always nice. like you're having a lot of fun with it. So. Yeah, it's always good, isn't it? So. <laughs> the harder it is, the more fun it is. That's the way you look at it. Jim, so, what did you run at the weekend? Out of interest? Are you running your we, plan A What did I break at the weekend? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, yes. <laughs> I hope that didn't get put on film, but there was, uh, yeah, it was, it was just raining so much. There was a an area where you came out of region and um, the moment you got off the concrete path, you could see everyone had been going that way because it was just a, a slushy mud pile. And I decided <laughs> at that point it was a really good idea to try and sprint to the next objective. Um, and one foot just slid out from underneath me. I landed like a complete sack of shit. Um, <laughs> bigger than the sack of shit that people already saw. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, when I, when I got up the... Uh, the barrel stayed perfectly straight. It was just the top of the rail and the bottom of the rail were pointing in different directions. Um, and I managed to completely fuck my ACOG, um, which I've had for like 12 years. Oh, um, shit. <laughs> yeah, and, and now, I mean, it's just literally the, the seal must have gone on it when, it when it impacted and it was completely fogged inside and oh. I, I couldn't oh. see anything. And it was a little bit of my soul died. And capture um, no. but uh it was weird i just put a cable tie around um around the, the upper and the low uh, the, <laughs> the top and bottom of the rail yeah. um still played through the rest of the, the game with it no dramas um and i had a couple of guys like one guy jumped on top of a tank and he was trying to shoot some guys that were about sort of 40 45 meters away and he he was trying to do it with a pistol which was pretty insane but was that in the um, Sunday? yeah i saw um, him and i was like what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so he asked if I could borrow the rifle, or if he could borrow my rifle, and I chucked it up to him. And he got the two guys he was aiming at, and he was like, this gun's really, really good. I bet it was expensive. And I was like, no, it's 135 quid. And he was just like, fuck off. I was like, no, genuine, 135 quid gun. And then he just like, proved something that I've always said, is you don't have to spend mega money. No, definitely not. That could result, and uh, that same applies to the, to the Viper kit we were just talking about. You know, it's... Um, yeah. It's very much inspired some by some amazing bits of kit that are out there in the, the real steel world. Um, but it's at an affordable price and for airsoft, I think that's that's key, you know. I, yeah. I don't know what, what you've been finding, Scott, as a as a retailer. I mean, um it, you know, it, 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 is price the biggest issue or is it uh, people's egos, I think, is the, the big one. Um, you know, there's it's people who <laughs> <they're> like, uh, <laughs> you know, no, I won't drive a Skoda. I think you'll find a drive an Audi. It's like, <laughs> um, yeah, so no, it's the same thing. It really is. I mean, I've got some, uh, I've got one of the Cry JPCs for when they came out years ago. I mean, there's revisions come out. I've never bothered changing. Um, and I've got one of the Haley rigs that we sell as well. Um, but at the weekend there, I was running one of the Viper Molly belts from 15 years ago when they were just perfectly square. Yeah, <laughs> had that with a couple of Viper pouches and stuff on it. Um, so yeah, I'm not definitely not a kit snob. I've got my nice kit, but then I've got stuff like that. If I was going to do a grey sort of loadout thing, I'd probably pick up some of that Viper kit because it's not something I run all the time. So as a li little kind of add-on stuff, uh, yeah, definitely got its place and it's excellent kit. Like you say, it's 
inspired by um, <laughs> some some Gucci brands out there. But let's face it, the Gucci brands are just you know rehashing pouches and pockets and stuff. They're not doing anything crazy innovative at all, really. Um, they're just changing layouts and things like that. So yeah, it's all the same stuff. Just lipstick on a pig. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I think there's way too much that goes on where people start arguing about, um, you know, cry versus, you know, whatever. And I mean, again, it's, it's like whatever you can afford, just go with it. Yeah. You know? it if, you but if you're afford, wearing it every day, it. if you're wearing it every day, I'm not going to say the vibe is going to hold up for as long as the cry stuff is. But <laughs> yeah. for airsoft, you know, if you're playing once a month, twice a month, it's, it's going to be more than sufficient. I mean, yeah. You look at the micro rig versus uh, the Viper VX utility rig, you're going to have to go through like five, six of them to even start looking at the same cost. Yeah. Um, but if you're running it every day and you're, a, you know, you're going on the range with it real still and you've got all the weight and, you know, a lot of that movement, then uh, maybe, yeah, that's when you're going to start seeing the flaws on it. But yeah. then, sorry. sorry go. No, no, go, go for it. Just going to say, we supply a couple of guys, friends of mine, stuff out. Uh, they do PMC work in Iraq and a lot of them are running Viper kit. And uh, oh, yeah. wow, that's gonna cause some hate in the comments, yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least the guy's like, Mark. And it's like, yeah, but you know, if you get shot and stuff, it's like, as long as the plate doesn't fall out, everything's <laughs> you know, and, and that's it. Uh, but generally, I find uh, on the like, snobbery side of things, I find the snobbery is more the guys who don't wear expensive kit hating the guys who the do, the guys who do, yeah, the guys who do. <laughs> Let's face it, it's cosplay with guns, really. Sometimes, isn't it? They yeah, just drive absolutely. Snobbery. They're they're looking at themselves. They're not looking at anybody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's the way. It's my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, the weekend there I had um, the the Viper trousers, uh, nice lightweight mm. trousers, which were great, um, and an old DPM shirt that I found in a bucket in the warehouse. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this will do. Nice. And, uh, yeah, it was totally fine. It's, it's weird. I'm sort of just touching uh, off what you're saying there, but the um, I always find that you know people rave about you know the so-called real steel kit, you know the cry and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, I think it's different if you're like a special forces unit that's, that's issued that stuff. Yeah. You know, it, it doesn't mean that it lasts forever. I mean, those guys trash the gear just the same way as airsoft is trash kit. The only difference is they don't pay for it. You know, and I think it's one of those things that you know if you can. You have to go with what you can afford, and if you can't afford cry, then you know Viper's a great alternative. If you can't Definitely. afford Viper, then Combat's a great alternative to, yeah. to that. And we've all got to start somewhere at a, a budget. And you know, I, I've always sort of said, you know, if, if the guys at Hereford and Paul and all these other places had to go and buy all their own kit, they'd probably be shopping with Combat as well. <laughs> oh, you know, Obi Man, he was he was doing fine, wasn't he? He wasn't in anything too fancy. So, yeah, yeah. they all turn up in super dry jackets and yeah. <laughs> even their thirties feel cool again. Yeah, yeah well, you know, I mean, it's, it's like you know, you can talk to to anyone from sort of that world, and they're like, "I've got an old DPM chess rig. I absolutely love it. I've had it since the eighties, and it's just like, you know, yeah, you stick with what you know and what you, what feels comfortable." And I mean, yeah. Um, I know my bank doesn't feel comfortable with cry, so uh, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, isn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah. Availability is always the big issue. Well, I mean, you, you stock a lot more of that sort of higher end um, gear. I mean, one of the things I've, I've, I think I've said to you before, and I've always said uh, about you, is that I think Lamware has got some impeccable tasting products. Um, I mean, you're wearing a, a PTS t-shirt now i know you guys do an awful lot with pts um, <laughs> yeah and and it's uh it's quality products and, and always has been and it's um it's nice to have places that you can go to that stock that i mean you know whether yeah. it's 511 or, or whatever else you know it's um a big thing for us um i don't know if you <clears throat> have it as well is is trying to work with manufacturers and suppliers that are easy to work with um definitely. I mean, I'm not getting any major names or anything like that, but we <laughs> no, and it's not, and it's basically some of the manufacturers require a lot more uh, time and input and communication to get uh, your goods, your results, and what you need. Yeah. Whereas companies like PTS, um, Crytac are really good. Um, you know, there's companies like that that the communication you just say, yeah, we need this, and you only have to ask once. 
uh, there's manufacturers out there, we'd place a big order. The shipment would come in and we go, oh, you know, where, where is all these things? And they're like, oh, yeah, they're coming in the next shipment. And you're like, well, you know, we, we've paid for everything. Where is it? So you're, you're constantly chasing and checking. And we've generally just over the years naturally through time steered away from uh, companies that are difficult to deal with and stick with ones that are easy to deal with um, to some extent. <laughs> It just trickles down, doesn't it? If you're it out aggro, then the customer's going to have aggro, and and then you have to feed it back up the chain, and it becomes, you know, the customer that thinks you're not providing great service when you're doing. It. What they don't see behind the scenes is you're sending every email and swearing at every person yeah, yeah. You do to get a result, and uh, or to try and sort of you know, make their um, their experiences as best as it can be. And sometimes yeah. I mean, I've done it where I've I've literally slugged my guts out to try and um, help someone and mm -hmm. still fail miserably at the end of it. <laughs> well, for example, uh, big company we deal with, um, one of the biggest in the world, they, uh, we had a customer email us saying, oh, can you get us this part for this gun? Um, so we forward the email on to them going, we need this part. Customers also contacted the manufacturer. This email goes to the head guy pretty much there, who then forwards the email to us saying, can you provide them with this part? I send the email back to them saying, I've already asked you for this part. Mm -hmm. and they don't reply. And that's and that's English speaking. That's not, that, there's no language barrier. <laughs> I'm just not going to reply. It's like stuff they don't make anymore. And they even just said, no, sorry, we don't make that anymore. But it's just no reply. <laughs> just, well. So the customer just thinks we're sitting on our hands. Um, and, you know, we've got a team there dedicated just doing emails pretty much all the time. And firing them all back and forward and it's it is really just an uphill battle most of the time because most of the manufacturers just want to box shift they want a big distributor out there um just to you know pump container loads in and they don't want to see about it or hear about it they don't care uh, generally speaking yeah but you, you've got a again i think it goes back to having great taste that you've got a, a bit of a uh bit of an ace up your sleeve with the fact that you're the only place to uh, to go to for for all the new Umarex stuff. Um, um, we distribute as well. So as soon as it's uh, coming in, uh, basically businesses can buy it um, at the same rate. But what happens, a lot of businesses tend to wait until it's landed. But by then there's pre-orders and stuff. And uh, a couple of big places like uh, JD, they buy quite a lot of Umarex um, and big dumps from us. Um, so if we run out, they might still have stuff and things like that. So it's... Uh, there's always a little bit of bony contention in the UK with people being distributors and retailers and things like that. It's always the, the sticking point to say you can't be both. Um, yeah, you could argue that, but as long as it's everybody's treated fairly, and we've we've had it before where um, we were meant to distribute something and we were told we were, and then it swung around and we weren't. And the company that did get it basically used to hold off our our order uh, our orders. Um, and that actually happened, <clears throat> and we were told, oh, no, we don't have this. And it would appear at another shop. I'm like, well, what happened there? Oh, no, they're mistaken. And you're like, wow. Oh, yeah, that actually happens. It's uh, it's business. It's the fun and games of it. People think yeah. Facebook's bad. Just try um, before we go too far, for anyone who's living under the Scottish Rock and hasn't heard of Land Warrior, do you want to, <laughs> uh, just in case for, for people who do listen now or people on the podcast who aren't aware of, Lamb Warrior. Do you want to just talk about how you got started? Because um, obviously you've been around a while now. Yeah, it's uh, it was like so many things in life. It was an accident. <laughs> um, <laughs> so years ago, started collecting a few replicas, uh, like everybody did uh, before um, the BCRA and everything came in. And I went to Airsoft Scotland, which is now Airsoft World, and uh, Stephen Pringle. I was there buying a Thompson. So Stephen Pringle, aka Frenchy who a lot of people still remember and dots around there. So I've seen quite a bit. Yeah. He, uh, he talked me into coming along to their site, the fort, um, played once and was instantly hooked. And I played there for years and years and years. And then, um, yeah, that was kind of the, the beginning of it. When I started land warrior, um, I, don't come from a wealthy family. If you've seen train spot, and that's pretty much where I grew up. And I was working in a call center uh, doing uh, technical support for Samsung mobiles, and I basically had a couple grand. Uh, started the the website, and bought some stock, 
and then just kind of bought and sold stuff. And within three months, I'd already filled uh, like the spare room at my mum's house because I was living in a flat at the time. And I was like, right, I need a property. So I got a cheap uh, industrial unit. The place was an absolute death trap. It was awesome. And uh, <laughs> the, the ceiling actually nearly caved in under the weight of the snow one time. We had to put up aquapop. <laughs> It was terrifying. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we started that, and we were in the, the, the shed. It was affectionately known for years and years, and we just kind of grew organically. You know, we've never done it. Uh, no investors, no big loans, no lottery wins, um, you know, human trafficking, all the rumors. Um, luckily, purely just done it based on service, buying stuff, selling stuff, and finger on the pulse of what people want or trying our best to do that. And then and did the site come out of that as well? Was that just like a natural progression into it? Or? Um, we we initially worked with a site um, that was up in Edinburgh. And then uh, a local estate were basically looking to offer some more activities. And we got involved working with them. So the, the site came along probably after a few years of having the store. Um, it was tricky doing the site. It was a, a lot of extra work. Um, as anybody who runs a site knows, it's, it's quite a... Uh, a drain on resources, um, or rack and load. Hello. <laughs> um, <clears throat> it's quite a drain on resources, uh, and that made it quite quite hard for the staffing and things like that. But it, it's kind of come a long way since then, and you know, twelve years down the line now, I think. Uh, I've got really good guys. Uh, I've got good helpers, marshals, stuff like that. So we just try and just try and do our best and be approachable, normal people, without any weird habits. <laughs> <laughs> And Liar, you've all got weird habits. Like <laughs> <laughs> Mars Bar is not a habit, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> um, no. my, nice. my wife my wife was <laughs> gutted when uh, I spoke about these Mars Bars for eight, for years. And I took her to get her first one when we were up there and she hated it. And I was like, <laughs> yes, you feel me about these. And I was like, I was like, I was like all right, I'll have two then. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you think it was going to taste like? Of course it's disgusting. Yeah, you really yeah. drink it when you're pissed. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, there's a number of them up here. I, I'm not sure how it becomes a delicacy. It's, uh, I think it plays a lot about society, doesn't it? <laughs> well, when did the, the real steel or the firearms side of it come into place? Is that more yeah. of a new or has that just been something that's grown over time? Um, so I, I've shot off and on for years and years. Um, I did the air cadets for a long, long time. That was kind of where a lot of my interest in outdoorsy stuff came. Uh, and I went all the way through and did the range conducting officer courses with them. So it was actually, uh, uh, taking live fire shooting with the cadets for many years. Um, once I'd finished that and I got into airsoft, obviously I'd already had that background. And, uh, a few years ago with a few manufacturers speaking to us, you know, saying, you should really actually look at doing this because it's not much <clears throat> more work what, than what we're doing already. So, yeah, we, we basically started up as a firearms dealership as well. And um, I don't know if you know, we're building our own firing range indoor, in store. So, Ooh, I, will, I did see it in the paper. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I got a little bit of backlash. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, there was a little bit of pushback on that. But to be honest, it was a uh, tiny bit of pushback, but a lot of positivity. Uh, and a lot of people actually contacting us even now. It, it was more of a, a bit of free advertising than a hindrance. Yes, so. I can imagine. Um, obviously, in Scotland, even from an air gun point of view, you have to have a license. Correct. Um, so how and that transition for you in terms of the firearms, in terms of the kind of the community around there that are interested in firearms. I presume you found it quite quite easy to get to. Yeah, it's not it's not incredibly difficult. There's what's difficult about firearms legislation in the UK is it's not one single piece of legislation, it's little tack ons. And even as you say with the air gun license, it's you know, you drive an hour down the road and I could just sell it over the counter, whereas up yeah. there you can license. Um so it, it's pretty much killed off air gun selling because people used to buy it for plinking and plinking is now no longer a viable reason for owning an air gun. So you get to be a member of a club and yeah. there's no air gun clubs because no one's ever set them up because you never needed them. So like, it's yeah. just another dent into or another yeah. erosion into the firearms yeah. industry and it's just a, it's a sad state of affairs. But I mean, I, I'd be surprised if you didn't get the same problems that, that I get on a daily basis in the shop where you get someone standing there going, I've got a firearm certificate. Why can't you sell me an airsoft gun? 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the, the question specifically asked to the Home Office uh, whether they could, and the Home Office came back with, well, can you buy a real firearm with your Airsoft membership? Yeah. Well. <laughs> No. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's interesting pieces of legislation. Um, I don't know how clued up the miniature rifle ranges you heard of. Yeah. Them? Yeah. So legal in the UK, if you have landowner's permission, probably shouldn't broadcast this online. Uh, <laughs> you have landowner's permission with written permission that says, I give whoever uh, permission to run a miniature rifle range on my land. You can buy a small and 0.23 caliber. So technically, you could buy a five-five-six rifle um, with ammunition without any licenses. Mental rifle ranges. It was meant for all the fairgrounds and things like that originally. Mm. A lot of these uh, two-two rimfire ranges that uh, pop up. I think they have them at Northern Shooting Show and stuff like that. Yeah. They are running as a miniature rifle range. So yeah. the guys actually running that technically don't even need a firearms license. Yeah, I think that's another set of loopholes that they're trying to, it, to close. It will, and it's, it will, uh, yeah, yeah it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a shame because, I mean, shoot, shooting sports, whether it's firearms or airsoft, <laughs> I, I don't think they should be being discouraged. They should be being encouraged because, you know, it, I think if you learn the right way and, and it demystifies it for people, you know, and it's sort of... The issue is we've been demonised. Um, yes. Anyone who shoots is right wing and left wing at the minute is very vocal and very angry. And they are allowed on social media and everything to basically just hammer away at anybody they perceive as right. <clears throat> um, and, you know, that that's just the world we live in at the minute. Yeah. It's a, it's a sad state of affairs because yeah. safe ownership of, of any... Anything. I mean, you said about you know motorcycles earlier. I mean, how many more people are killed on motorbikes every year? Yet, no one's really interested in going after them. But a, a man with a pointy toy gun is clearly evil and must be stopped. Well, you know, <laughs> do you know the, the most deaths of uh, any sport in the UK? The most dangerous sport in the UK. More death than anything else. Take a guess. Oh come on! Is it? Oh. I know well, it's not my table boxing. tennis club. I play boxing. Walking. More people die walking every year. Oh my god! Seriously, for you. Stop it now. Sit down and go live. Get yourself a motorized right. scooter before it all ends. <laughs> there are more people walking than probably any other sport, but or, I don't know. You can call it sport. Anything you're in is not a sport. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, yeah. So it's yeah. You, we're demonized. That's that's the issue. Yeah, yeah, it's again uh, sad state of affairs. I guess he's in the uh, in the comments section, but nobody went with walking. Must have been in public places. No, <laughs> uh, is that is that classed as a sport now? Because I thought that was just like a hobby thing. You know, anything anything that you can make a competition to sport. Can you do it? You get competitive yoga. I mean, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, and yeah, that's dangerous, but surely going to be dangerous. <laughs> so, yeah. you've been to the Northern Shooting Show. Um, mm -hmm. You go to quite a lot of these events. Unfortunately, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the Northern Shooting Show, and from an airsoft point of view, it was a bit of a, well, it was quite a bit of a letdown, really. Um, what's your take on it? As someone you, you know, you've done a British shooting show, you've done a Northern shooting show, and I'm sure there's a load more near sort of South Yorkshire in all. Yeah, September. we've not done that one. We've only done uh, in recent years the uh, British shooting show and Northern. Only two we have done. Oh, okay. What's your take on them as someone in the airsoft side? Because I think the firearm side would be totally different for you. Yeah. Um, oh, honestly, they're a waste of time. Do you... <laughs> Where the issue lies, <laughs> is, the people running them want to charge too much money because they think it's like the firearms industry. Yeah. Uh, that's not how it works for Airsoft. And then the people who are turning up, the players, they want a bargain. So these things, don't, they don't meet in the middle. They, they're yeah. <laughs> way over. So British Shooting Show costs thousands. Thousands and thousands, and in the time we staff it, uh, rooms, everything else, it's crazy. Um, it, I would be better doing a 50% off sale online in my store for a week, um, and I'd probably do better. Yeah. So, so I do it. I'll see you there next year. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> to be honest, we, do, we do it more as an advertising thing than anything, but as an actual 
a retail opportunity, they're not they're not great, and that's why you don't see many retailers at them. Do you, do you see in long term? Is there any chance of that growing? Do you see there's a need for it, or do you really think look, it's just two aspects that are just not compatible at least in this respect? The only way it will ever change that I can see is um, airsoft coming more into line with the firearms industry, and if it does that, prices will probably double on just about everything for it to be, work that way. Yeah. It's the only way the margins would be there to sustain what people need. But then obviously you would have the memory that your 200 quid gun was 200 quid, but why is it now 450? Well, this is kind of what I said with my cyber AK 14 years ago was cheaper than it is today. And yeah. it's like, I was like, wow, prices have gone up a bit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, why, I mean, yeah. but why would it be more expensive if it does the same thing? Because what you would need is more steps in place, uh, some more distributors, uh, things like that. So oh. say like Nuprol, for instance, they could do a giant stand, but they've already imported everything. So they've got their cut to make. And then uh, once they pass and read, so th this is where it becomes tricky. Airgun margins are, well, you, you will know, airgun margins are way better than airsoft, infinitely better. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the firearms industry, second handguns and things like that. So there's, it's, I think it's the margin in airsoft products that's the issue because a lot of players will buy direct out from Hong Kong. Um, so there's a new release. Uh, <laughs> a new release out. I can't name names. I probably could, but I'm not. Uh, new release out, new EAG, create. Everybody wants it. Uh, couldn't get spare mags for it from the distributor. But this is buying direct from the distributor, but Red Wolf in Hong Kong are selling the mags for less than I can buy them direct. How does that work? Yeah, well, I mean, as is it a bit of... no, no, <laughs> oh, right. no, it's an AG, but yeah, it's um, yeah, so there's there's a variety of issues that uh, across the industry. Um, there's companies like uh, Crytac are actually doing really good at kind of trying to balance it worldwide. Um, almost doing a, a kind of a little Apple sort of trick, um, which I, I don't know if that kind of goes against competition rules and things like that. But they, they don't enforce as such. Um, but there's certainly we would like, and then they only deal with people who kind of play ball a little bit. Yeah, it's a bit um, easy when you're out of the country. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> buy them directly then. Yeah, but, exactly. Um, so but yeah, have, sorry. So I was going to say, I think I think that it's a good model to work with because at the end of the day, they can. Can not only control the quality of of the product, how it's being yeah. sold, and, and all the other bits and pieces, but it allows them to actually make enough money to develop new products. and And I think that's something that a lot of people, and some people may be watching tonight, never understand. You know, and that, as we do this sort of like a little bit of a peek behind the curtain of what goes yeah. on, I mean, just to get one product on your shelf, I mean, from import duty to VAT and to all these other little snippets of of everyone wants a cut and you've got to pay them all and then you've still got to pay all the staff and keep the lights on and everything that yeah, like minimum wage uh, and a full-time employee what are you seventeen thousand pounds a year plus their pensions it's going it's up boris johnson yeah. gets his way uh, <laughs> i think boris you'll sort us all isn't that <laughs> <laughs> But, God um, and politics. What are you doing, Graham? Oh, are you going? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just don't. Uh, I just don't appreciate any politics. To be honest, <laughs> um, <laughs> not on a Monday anyway. <laughs> about the soft cocoon on the shelf uh, when the the Evo was being developed. Um, I mean, this is back before ASG even had a, a presence in the UK directly. Um, the mold <clears throat> that makes the magazines. Uh, I saw that at the factory, and it's about seven foot tall. This mold, it looks like it weighs several tons, and I think it's like 50, 60 grand's worth of injection mold, and it makes four magazines. <laughs> oh my god! You look wow. at your. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. It really is. Um, and that's why you buy a pack of Evo mags in threes and they're 50 quid. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of makes you appreciate it now, really, when you yeah. hear that sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's insane. that The development costs, I remember uh, speaking to the guys at GNP years ago, and they reckoned to develop a gun from scratch was around $100,000 from scratch. That, that was. I don't think that even included a gearbox. I think that, that was using a existing version 2 gearbox. I think that was when they were doing this. I was using version two, version three gearboxes. Yeah. <laughs> so, the guys, uh, Johnny and stuff from ASG, um, 
they I think spoke to like King Arms and stuff when they started looking at the Evo and yep. uh, they basically went, we have these gearboxes, it has to take one of these. And that is why they did it their own because they, they didn't, they wanted it to be exact, yeah. which is uh, why they, they went the route they did uh, because none of the off the shelf gearbox designs would actually work with the Evo, which is quite interesting. Interesting to know, yeah, absolutely. And it all has a massive effect on, on the price you end up paying. It's, yeah. it's just, again, I think yeah. it's, it's one of those things that you know, you're firing a, a less than what 0.001 of a pence BB yeah. um, to make, but you have to make however many billions to get it at that price to then put it in a bottle and put it on a shelf and for the retailer to make a couple of quid on it. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. Um, but then everyone wants to haggle over the price, and, and I don't. I mean, going back to the, the shows and everything, I mean, I did one years ago, and we found that it was a waste of time because you've then got eight retailers all with the same products. Yeah, and yeah, all they can do at that point is is go. Well, I'll make it five p cheaper, and the guy next door yeah. is going to do it ten p cheaper. And by the time he gets the guy down the end, that guy goes back to the beginning. Guy goes, that guy said he could do it for a pound less. Will you match it? And then you're yeah. just like. Fuck off. Well, we, <laughs> we did the, the range years ago when they did their, I can't remember, the Airsoft Arms Fair, I think they called it. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I still remember that was um, when Edgar Brothers were distributing the PTS stuff. Yeah. And uh, the margins were tight as, as hell anyway. And this guy came over and he went, oh, yeah, Dingo Dogs over there will do it for this price. And like, all right. And I picked up all the stuff and he's like, oh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm putting it in the van. I was like, why? He's like, because there's no point in me selling it for less than this. I can take it back and sell it later. And um, anybody buy from Dingo Dogs now? Yeah, unfortunately, yeah. that's a yeah, company that uh, closed their doors. And so. Exactly. <laughs> and and that's the problem. There's, there's too many people will cut their own throat uh, yeah. to get the sale and, uh, you know, literally killing themselves because they're afraid they're going to lose out. And sometimes you are actually better losing out. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is where I see like the Midlands Airsoft Fair, which was just a few weeks ago. Is that's yeah. where that middle ground where there are a few retailers there who are in the geographical location. It makes no sense for anyone in the southeast to go there for sure. Yeah. Not unless you deal with a specific, like Jason was there from Longbow, he's specific on the SRS and the modifier. But unless you've yeah. got a specific area where you stand out from, but the rest of it is secondhand sales, and that way, yeah. like you say, the players are straight away haggling, and it yeah. didn't matter if it was a stand or a second-hand seller, they were still trying to haggle either way. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think you're right there. That's the big problem, and it's not really the same in the in the gun industry, especially when we were there. Although it was quite funny watching a few airsoft friends at the Northern Shipping Show trying to haggle straight away at the uh, the gun stands. <laughs> and they were like, no, they just didn't even entertain it at the start. <laughs> and, I mean, we've, we've, you know, we'll do the, oh, yeah, we'll chuck in a bottle of DBs, or we'll chuck yeah. in. You do, you try and upsell. You don't, give let you know exactly yeah you try and get rid of more stuff uh so you can do a little bit with that but it's yeah i mean there, there's money in airsoft there's not no money in it but you have got to be smart and you yeah you've got to look after yourself and your company because at the end of the day you know i've got a lot of staff with mortgages and kids and stuff like that and that is the number one priority because these guys have got to you know look after their family so i've got to look after them so that's that's priority number one um every time for us as a business yeah, and you wouldn't be where you were if you weren't doing that because at the end of the day, no one would feel sorry for you if you hadn't made any money. You just wouldn't be here at the end of the day. Yeah. No well, it's also um, just a race to the bottom all the time, isn't it? And, you know, you just yeah. kind of you end up, you know, it's not good for the industry because if, if no. the retailers don't make any money, then they can't afford to buy the new stuff that's coming out. And if they don't buy the stuff from the distributors and the uh, and the manufacturers, then they don't get to make anything new. And eventually yeah. we'll get to a point where, all right, we're just stuck with, you know, 2000, you know, 2001 technology guns and, and no yeah. one's developing anything new. And, and you don't get companies like Viper and people yeah, like that yeah. who keep re-upping and reinvesting. And it's... it's um, the, the, the box shifting distributors, I think, are one of the biggest dangers to Airsoft in the, in the UK as well, because the uh the prices just go up you know yeah. they, well look at the an a and k 249 you know when we, i sold them when they first came out they were like 195 quid and what are they like 450 yeah. now yeah but, it's almost yeah. as expensive as the classic army ones that yeah. they were yeah. that they were the cheap ripoff of yeah exactly <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and, that, and that's the, the problem when you're you know you've got these distributors that are not effectively they're not airsoft companies a lot of the time they're just you know 
buying in pallet loads and shipping them out to you know whoever opens an account with them sometimes um so it's it is a real balance and i saw someone saying about cycling there um you know that i i actually genuinely think the days of the big airsoft shop may be numbered um purely because well, look how many of this are actually big ones us jd zero one fire support airsoft world big but there's no new ones have come up for a long, long time. Yeah. You know, why is that? A lot of it's little ones. Expensive. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of little ones come up and look at bike shops. How many big bike shops are there? You've got your big name brands like Evans and they've shut a load. And then the rest are little one man bands and tiny little shops. Um, so I think that's a danger that the airsoft uh, industry could go that way as well. You'll end up with, you know, just little tiny shops that actually can't do anything good to promote the industry because they're stuck under a, a lid of big distributors stocking the cheapest stuff as well because that's all that i can turn over and it's yeah yeah uh, yeah like i say just a race to the bottom and it's yeah. i think it's like not just because i work in a shop but i would always encourage anyone to go to a bricks and mortar store mm -hmm. um regardless of, of size because the more you support those stores the bigger they yeah, can definitely. become and develop and you know some will maybe one day rival man worry but does a good job we do a good job i'd never take that away from anybody but there won't be the things of like somewhere to take your gun to get serviced anymore because it'll be an online faceless organization that yeah you know you can't yeah. turn up at the door and ring the door to the warehouse sort of thing yeah so. but then i think the sites have come quite a long way in the last few years as well though and i think um what i'd like to see in the next like, five to ten years is a kind of a more professional spin on the site it's almost mm. like what sterling are doing but you know instead of it just a muddy car park with just guys standing around in the morning then going running around the wood you know a more a professional barrier type yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice to see kind of more big professional fields sort of set up almost like a mainline business um there's one i don't know if it's in the canary islands or something it's a hangar hangar 31 or 47 or something and it's actually pitched more at a kind of fun family day out sort of thing they've, they've got a youtube video it's quite cheesy but that's actually what's going to bring airsoft into the mainstream accepted move it away from the oh it's guys with guns and move it more into the oh yeah that looks actually fun and you can take your kids along and make it accept activity center rather than a uh yeah. yeah hollywood sports in america haven't they they've obviously got the massive site which is cut up in zones and it is a, a you know seven day a week yeah activity center um uh -huh. i mean dog tags not far off that the idea of being but they've got paintball they've got axe firing they've got yeah. fours you know um it definitely makes things look a lot more legit and yeah again it raises more awareness to people who go there maybe for one activity but spot another mm -hmm. um i'd like to no. see the manufacturers and distributors kind of pushing and, and helping more that way um with some of the big retail stores in the uk i think that would do quite a, a lot for the industry as a whole yeah, it was one of those things I said recently is that we get the most common manufacturers, well, you know, the Vulcan, the ASG, mm. the uh, the New Pro was going to events, but beyond mm. that, it's pretty empty, isn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. It would be good to see some more of that in the UK. And obviously Viper and a few of the clothing line, I should say that before. Uh, <laughs> I yeah. did that message saying, I was at the event where you were at. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's, 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 you mean, what, what's to stop someone, say, like uh, New Pro, running yeah. their own big game um i don't know if you remember the british shooting show when the sterling guys used to run a sort of training event there yeah and like that. yeah yeah um so yeah there's nothing to kind of stop these companies getting involved that way um take, well, so take, the same way of um sf international running their own events wasn't it yeah, what, yeah. what kind of started for more of a magazine event i know it's kind of yeah. changed up since then um but yeah you know it there's nothing to stop. I mean, New Pro were heavily involved with the the game in Ireland just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. They kind of had New Pro all over the the title yeah, of yeah. the event. Um, so no, that would be absolutely. Um, they were involved in the advertising. Well, it certainly seems at the moment in terms of the advertising for um, the first game to come back to Stanter in a long time. Um, I think is it Combat. Combat. Uh, yes. uh, I saw it. Yeah, yeah, I was quite surprised actually. Yeah, I think it's in October, and um, mm -hmm. I think New Pro are listed as one of the sponsors of the event, along with, again, I think it's Combat UK and... Mm -hmm. Combat Airsoft is. Combat Airsoft. Airsoft. Yeah, so, um, and that's interesting, because that was a site that everyone was told a little while ago would never come back as a... I think there's no people running it now, so I think that's yeah. why 
has become available again for some time. Never say never. Never say never. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'll just put it on the screen in case anyone didn't see that event being announced when Facebook wants to load up. Yes, that would be an interesting one. Um, have either of you played a centre? Uh, years ago I went there, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Yeah, very unique site. Do we think it's going to set out very quickly? <laughs> um, well, do you know what? There were some guys, that were, uh, I don't know if this is a, a, going to be an accurate test of how quickly that will sell out, but there were some guys that were at Catering. Um, that literally we were having a chat and they were like, I've got to go. Um, tickets have just gone on sale for that game. So um, <laughs> but they were going back to the accommodation to to go and try and get a bit of Wi-Fi to, um, to book the event up. So, uh, yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's a great site. It's a very unique site. And I think it will it will attract a lot of players, especially those that have, have you know, been disappointed that there haven't been those games there for a while. So, yeah. Um, I, th I think it's the same reason why Copial sold out when that came back. Um, was it last year or the year before? Um, you know, there's a lot of people who got very fond memories of that place, and, uh, and it was cold and wet, <laughs> <laughs> cold, wet, and like a 10 hour drive. It's like, oh, <laughs> well, I, I, I still remember seeing you and Alan and a few of the boys that were doing a it was a August Bank Holiday weekend game down there, and you guys were like the PMC team, and oh yeah, you, you had the big five story building, and um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was an interesting Sterling event. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it was very, down, like, such a cool village, though the the Copel, it's yeah. massive, isn't it? It's, uh, it's a town. It really it is, is a town. Yeah. Of Whereas Catrick, I'd say, is a village. You know, it's <laughs> I, like, I like the intimacy of Catrick. <laughs> <laughs> If you've ever wanted to fight in Emmerdale Farm, yeah, yeah. It's definitely it. You know, and I mean that in the best way. I'm not I'm not being nasty about it. But. Yeah, no, it's, it's it's just well, the thing is, Catrick was actual housing, um, whereas Cope Hill was purpose built, wasn't it? So yeah. the doorways in Cope Hill can run a two Royal Marines standing side by side through a doorway. We Catrick, you know, your average airsofter may have to turn sideways to get through some of the doors. Uh, <laughs> a little small the houses. You said you wouldn't say about that. That was. Uh, <laughs> I, I would say. Some of them were definitely a few situations where I was like, "Oh, I'm really glad I didn't wear my webbing for this door." <laughs> yeah. was, uh, one of the games at Catrick years ago. Her friend, he's like, he was six foot nine, and there was like a little mouse hole in a cupboard to get through, and he just looked and he went, "Yeah, I'll just go outside." <laughs> I'm going to try that. Yeah, that's the dread I have every time someone turns around and goes, Right, just jump through that bottom floor window, and it's like, <laughs> With <you> what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have trouble getting up the steps. <laughs> <laughs> fell up about three sets of stairs at Catrick, and they were all in the accommodation. So, are you doing any, uh, any other big events? And then the rest of my stupid running stuff that I do. Cool. So you are you getting running the Scottish team for for that event? Uh, unless someone else will stupidly volunteer. Yes. It's <laughs> early in Scotland in December. It normally. Yes, it's uh, first weekend in December. Normally, yeah. yeah, yeah. That sold out in like minutes last year as well. I kept crashing their website. Um, yeah, it's a good game, but it's a very unique game because it's very competitive. Um, the worst thing you can turn up to do is turn up and think that it's going to be like a touristy fun game um, or, or spectator sport. Um, I get I get a bit vocal sometimes with the Scottish it's team. A really serious one because I always look at that one as like you look at the whole diary of the year and I'm like yeah these are serious serious. Just, that's got to be a laugh and a jolly before Christmas. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's like match. <laughs> it's competitive, but it's a very difficult thing to do. Is keep something really competitive, but also keep it friendly and fun um i mean i love the sterling guys but you know when we're out playing the gloves are off there's absolutely no quarters given <laughs> when the same <laughs> it's all fine but yeah and it's like it's it's proper game face time um it's, it's an excellent game if you're competitive and you want to play an absolutely brutal game that you will not enjoy absolutely guarantee you will hate every second of it <laughs> go it it's great you'll enjoy oh, it afterwards but it's not an event it's, it's total type two fun it's uh, who it, won last year? Shut up, um, <laughs> <laughs> who won the year before as well? Yeah, <laughs> two in a row, finally. 
which is not as good as my five in a row, I must say. But uh, yeah, <laughs> no, it was it was really good, really good team England had last year. It was the best team they'd had so far, actually. Um, and it, again, it goes back to that. It just feels like you are losing so bad for you know fifteen hours straight or whatever. <laughs> um, it's it's torture, but it's good torture. <laughs> yeah, pretty, pretty fun. Excellent. Well, I'm hoping to get to that one this year, if time permitting, and yeah, um, I will probably spend the weekend getting shot by you again. So it'd be uh, very fun. Better <laughs> get shot by me than shouted at from me. That's uh, the Scottish guys. Some of them going a bit of a huff with that. Um, <laughs> my, my excessive motivation. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good fun, but it's, it's just trying to keep everybody fired up for such a long time it is it's really hard and then the weather plays such a big effect down there as well doesn't it if it's if it's yeah. too hot it's going to be miserable if it's going to be too cold you know you've got to fight that before yeah we've had, we've had snow a couple of years it's been uh it's tough but you, you know yourself that site is pretty unforgiving anyway it's, yeah. it's just, just a lot of a lot of footwork yeah um, especially if you're getting shot a lot back to the respawns and back in um i mean i think my watch said i covered about 20 K on the Saturday, um, which was quite that's me playing quite leisurely down there. But it's in England, Scotland. I think I did, I think I did something like thirty kilometres on the Saturday at England, Scotland, on the on the that first day. So it's it's a lot of running back and forward. Yeah, it's uh, I, I I wouldn't dare measure the amount of steps I've done. It would just fill me with dread and make me want to go and buy a burger. Um, <laughs> 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 But um, but no, I mean, just looking at the time, we're coming to sort of the end of that hour yeah. That, yeah, that we promised everyone we'd keep to. Um, so yeah, I mean, thank you very much, Scott, for for uh, you know, like I said, going behind the yeah behind the, uh, on on airsoft from the point of view as a retailer and yeah. a, and a site operator and a um, you know, a, an industry person that's trying to push airsoft forward yeah and shooting sports in general right? yeah yeah it's all it's all, all under one umbrella the way is the way i look at it so everything shooting is good and everybody should be getting involved in it good good and for those that want to know what you're doing um where's the best place to to sort of get in touch with you and find you uh facebook's always a, a very easy one so we have uh, obviously the website land Warrior airsoft we also have uh our uh airsoft website which is um airsoft edinburgh.com that's for the game site and then the new part of the business for the indoor shooting is land warrior core as in core skills um so we're kind of developing different sides to the the, the business now and that'll be interesting to see how this goes over the next year fantastic excellent we wish you all the success with it it would be nice to have some success with it either way <laughs> for a very long time well, I was told many years ago it's a long road to an overnight success. Yes. Exactly. But no, thank you very much for uh, for sharing some time with us. And thank you, um, like I say, hopefully we'll uh, well I'll see you again at uh, an event soon. Um, are you uh, are you at any events this weekend, or is it a? Uh... We're running our own game site this weekend, so we've got all the the, the regular lads up at Airsoft Edinburgh. Um, hopefully we get some nice weather for it, and uh, I think it's Father's Day this weekend, isn't it? So it might be, might yeah. be a little bit quiet. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, you're dodging, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, you're dodging. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so, <laughs> about the game day this weekend, so it should be good fun. Nice, yeah. Sarah, you're on to four. Is it Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, okay. I've been taking that modify out for the first time, so yeah. nice. Well, that. Yeah. Very cool. Are you up to anything else this week? Uh, no, just working, working my bollocks off, really. Oh, that's a bad habit. <laughs> It'll kill you faster than walking. Yeah, well, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you up to this weekend? Uh, working. Um, I won't work my bollocks off, but I. I will. <laughs> 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 well, Pete's away this week, but um, oh. he will he will watch this. Um, so, <laughs> but no, I'll. Um, no, it's going to be a busy weekend because we've got um, Ace Combat, uh, which is one of our, our regular sites down in, down in Kent, and I've got um, some of the guys going out to Reaper Ops, uh, which is the the Fort Borstal game that Sarah's going to be at. They're going to be doing site shop there, 
um, and then maybe sometime around eight o'clock on Sunday, I'll fall asleep and hopefully not wake up until <laughs> to Monday. Um, but I probably I was say that. where that phrase was going from that point. There are some competitive sports out there that I've been introduced to tonight that I will love. <laughs> 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 you can achieve. I'm gonna go out for a walk. <laughs> Dangerous walk. That's right. Oh my God, I'm shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're listening, don't leave the house. <laughs> uh, so uh, what about you, Graham? Where are you this weekend? Uh, I'm not playing this weekend. I think I've got a week off. I've got some housey stuff to do. I've actually got to go get another car. So uh, yeah, so no games this week. But hopefully the week after, I've got loads of stuff I can't wait to get out and play with. So uh, hopefully next week, uh, week after. And when you get this car, will you turn around to the guy that sold it to you and go, right, how can I upgrade it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Rip the engine out. Yeah, you know. yeah, <laughs> what's the <laughs> car? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, what's well, top speed? All right, can we make it go far? <laughs> Is it life already? <laughs> <laughs> how much Molly can go on the outside and how much can go on? <laughs> I need milk on the inside, Molly on the outside. Yeah, <laughs> And do you need your car to buy a second hand car? You <laughs> <laughs> painted a bright colour. It's fine. <laughs> my stupid man outfit lets me get this car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on that uh, bombshell there. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. If you are enjoying the show, please feel free to like and share this with friends. Don't forget if you're listening to us on your favorite podcasting platform don't forget to drop us a review everyone's really appreciated and we'll be having a show in a couple of weeks time where we read out all the reviews that we get so thank you very much for that that's a short show isn't it gonna yeah. <laughs> One more it's gonna say jim's a dick and <laughs> scottish <laughs> <laughs> review it <laughs> very long reviews <laughs> Scott, really appreciate you coming on. Thank you so much again. And guys, make sure you do check out landwarrioresoft.com. That's it for today. We'll see you next week, Monday, 8 p.m. And I believe our guest is going to be Rev, a revelation from YouTube if you watch him. So that should be happening next Monday. Thanks very much for watching, guys. And we'll see you next week. <laughs>